So we're continuing to do motion with constant acceleration. Here's our big six equations that we're gonna use for motion, all right? And it's about, it's really, again, it's just about persevering, guys, and just taking the time and slow down and read and understand what you're reading, okay? So how long does it take a car to cross a 30.0 meter wide intersection after the light turns green? If it accelerates from rest at a constant, okay, accelerates from rest. Now rest means it was stopped, okay? So that would mean V, of Z, v sub zero, okay? I said V sub zero. V sub O would have to be zero, okay? We know um, we're going to set this up so that right at the intersection, right at the beginning of the intersection, that's what we're going to call um, zero um, for our position. And then we want it to go 30 meters, right? So our X is going to be 30 meters. And we know our acceleration is 2.00 meters per second squared. All right. So let's, I'm going to write all my known because we don't always have a diagram like this. Okay. So what's known is that, um, my um, X is gonna have to be 30.0 meters. Um, I'm calling, you guys, when you're not given the initial position, I would always just write, give it, give it zero. I mean, call it zero meters, okay? And then um, we know our starting velocity is um, zero meters per second. We know our acceleration from right here is 2.00 meters per second squared. All right. And what we're trying to find is how long, right? So we want to find the time, T. So that's what we're trying to find. So we need something with T, right? So this is out we're not gonna use this one, okay? All right, so what I want you to do, I've given you one of them that you can throw out, all right? I want you to go through each of these and figure out which one we can use, all right? And so that's the Ed puzzle question is, which of these six can you use, all right? All right. So you pick it and then we'll come back. So the one you should have picked is this one right here, all right? So we're gonna use x is equal to x sub o, all right, plus v sub o times t plus one half a t squared, all right? So um, this x right here is gonna be 30.0 meters. So 30.0 meters is equal to the initial position, which is gonna be zero meters plus the initial velocity, which is zero meters per second, times my time, which I don't know, and then plus one half times my acceleration. And I should say this, okay, because this is gonna come up several times, okay? Um, going in this direction, the velocity is positive, right? Okay, and since the, and, we, and think about going through an intersection, you're gonna have to speed up. So velocity and acceleration are both gonna have to be positive here, okay? You're gonna see in the next few problems why I'm saying that. So the acceleration is 2.00 meters per second squared, all right? And then times my time squared. All right, so this is gonna be zero, this is gonna be zero, and so we're left with 30.0, is equal to, um, we could do one half of 2.000, which is 1.00 um, meters per second squared. So 1.00 meters per second squared times T squared. Okay, so I wanna isolate, I wanna get this T squared by itself. So I'm gonna divide both sides by this 1.00 meters um, Per second squared. So 30.0 meters divided by um, 1.00 meters per second squared is equal to 
t squared. All right, and then what I'm gonna do next is to get rid of a square, we're gonna square root. Okay, so we're gonna square root both sides. So I'm gonna put the t squared on the left side. So t squared is equal to the square root of 30.0 meters over 1.00 meters per second squared. And so this is gonna become t is equal to, and we're gonna pick the pot, we're gonna pick the positive value, sorry, sliding up, okay? We're gonna pick the positive value here because, um, because we could get positive or negative, okay? But we're gonna pick the positive value because time is positive, always positive, all right? So we're gonna put that into our calculator and um, see what we get. And I want you to round to three significant figures. All right, so let's put that in our calculator. Um, I'll pull my calculator up right here. So we have the square root of a fraction, which is 30.0 divided by 1.00. You could just put one, all right? And you get 5.47. So this is 5.47722255. This is way more precise than we sh we're supposed to be, right? And then, so we need to do three um, significant figures. So five is the first one, four is the second one, this seven is the third one. So this seven makes this seven become an eight. So we should be reporting out 5.48, and this would be seconds, all right? And so how long would it take to cross the intersection that's 30.0 meters wide, um, the car would take five point four eight seconds to cross the intersection. All right, and that's how you solve the first problem today. So for this time, we're gonna estimate the minimum stopping distance for a car. And I'm just gonna read this to you at first, okay? The problem is best dealt with in two parts. One, the time between the decision to apply the brakes and their actual application. That's the reaction time, all right? And so the car is gonna travel a certain distance before we can even press on the brakes, okay? And so that's gonna be this travel um, during the reaction time, all right? And then the actual braking period when the vehicle slows down. Okay, the stopping distance depends on the reaction time of the driver, the initial speed of the car, um, and we should know, we should realize that the final speed is zero because it's gonna stop, right? So final velocity is zero. But that's gonna happen over here when it's zero, not in here, okay? Um, and the acceleration of the car. Calculate the total stopping distance for an initial velocity of 100 kilometers per hour, which is the equivalent of 28 meters per second, or 62 miles per hour, and assume the acceleration of the car is negative 6.0 meters per second squared. Now, I wanna talk about this. Why does this have to be negative, okay? It has to be negative because our velocity is positive um, and the car, we're stopping it, so it has to be slowing down. For anything to slow down, if you have a positive velocity, this acceleration is gonna have to be negative. If you wanted to speed up, this would have to be positive, okay? So that's gonna help us determine whether the acceleration should be positive or should be negative, all right? Um, the reaction time for normal drivers, it's, it varies between 0 0.3 seconds and one second. And so for this problem, we're gonna assume that it's 0 0.50 seconds, all right? So round to two significant figures. So that's, our answer is gonna be rounded to two significant figures. So I'm gonna break this up. This first part, this is the first part that we're talking about, that it's just the distance the car travels during that reaction time, okay? So what do we know about this, okay? So I'm gonna call this X sub one. All right, so for this X sub one, I know my initial velocity, V sub zero, is 28 meters per second. All right, and um, I'm not gonna have any acceleration. I'm not gonna start the acceleration until right at this point right here, all right? And so um, I know that my initial position 
x sub zero. I'm gonna call, it was never said like where this is located. So I'm gonna make it zero meters. If they don't tell you, you can make it what you want, all right? All right, and then um, we know this is gonna take, this reaction time takes 0 0.50 seconds. So I know the time for this. All right, so we have a velocity, okay? And I should say this, this velocity is gonna stay 28. So it's not gonna change. So that means the average velocity and the actual velocity are gonna be the same thing because the velocity is not gonna change. It's, it's staying 28, okay? So with that said, okay, to solve for this distance, which piece would I use to figure out this distance x? Remember I'm given the velocity, the initial position, and the time. So which of these would I use? All right, so I'm gonna stop it and you pick, um, and then we'll come back. So we should have picked this one right here, okay? So we're gonna use that to solve for this distance. So we know x, x sub one, I'm gonna call it, is equal to my x sub zero, which is zero meters, plus my velocity. Now, it's velocity, these two, would, these two would be the same, right? The, if the final velocity and the initial velocity are the same, then when I divide by two, we're just gonna get the same value as these two, right? So, okay, so that's why we can just use um, the 28 meters per second. So 28 meters per second times 0 0.5 seconds, okay? And I wanna to round to two significant figures. So when I put this into my calculator, all right, I would wind up with 14 meters. All right, so that distance, just the, the distance the car traveled during that reaction time period is 14 meters. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is let's figure out this braking distance, okay? So, the, so this is the actual time where we applied the brakes to where the car actually stopped. So we're gonna start this, we're gonna start it right here and go all the way to right here. All right, and what are the things that we know? Well, this whole time, during this time, the velocity was this 28. So we still know that the initial velocity, V sub zero, is gonna be um, 28 meters per second. I know my final velocity, my ending velocity, because I've stopped, has to be zero meters per second. I don't know a time that this happened in, so I'm not gonna put one because I don't, I don't have one for that, okay? I know the acceleration, all right, is gonna be negative um, 6.0 meters per second squared. Okay, so now I'm doing a whole new problem. So now for this, I'm gonna call this my x sub zero, okay? So I'm gonna call x sub zero equal to zero meters again, okay? Because I'm only talking about from here to here, okay? Now there's other ways you could do this, but this is just one way, okay? So from here to here, it's zero meters. And so I wanna find, and I should have labeled this, I'm gonna label this x sub two. So that's what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find x sub two. Um, so there's, there's five things on here, right? There's, right? And so I have one, two, three, four of them. I need this fifth one, right? So which of these up here should I use to figure this out, okay? So look back up here, look and see which one you should pick, all right? And I'm gonna pause it, you pick, and then we'll come back. So you should have picked this one right here, okay? So we know the final velocity is zero meters per second, so we're gonna use, um, zero meters per second squared is equal to my initial velocity, which is 28 meters per second, squared, and then plus two times my acceleration, which is negative 6.0 meters per second squared, and then times my x sub two minus zero meters. Okay, so this is gonna be zero. Anything that's gonna be zero, I just write zero, okay? Um, let's wait on putting that, okay, so this is gonna be 28 
meters per second squared. Um, I'm going to make this become negative, all right? So minus 2 times 6.0 meters per second squared times x sub 2. Because x sub 2 minus 0 is just x sub 2. So I'm going to move this all over to the other side. So I get 2 times 6.0 meters per second squared times x sub 2 is equal to 28 meters per second squared. And then to get this x sub 2 by itself, I'm going to divide by 2 times 6.0. Okay, so x sub 2 is equal to 28 meters per second squared divided by 2 times 6.0 meters per second squared. And we'll put that into our calculator. All right, and we'll have our answer for the braking distance, okay, or how far the car traveled while it was braking, okay? So on our calculator, I'm going to put a fraction bar and then 28 squared and then divide by 2 times 6.0. And you get 65.333, but I want it to be two significant figures. So this is going to wind up being 60 five meters. All right. So how far, what was the stopping distance? Okay. So the stopping distance was these two added together. Okay. So the minimum stopping distance for the car or the stopping distance for the car was, and it was 14 meters plus the 65 meters, which gives you 79 meters. Okay, so that was the stopping distance for, the, for this car, all right? So for this next problem, we have a baseball pitcher, throws a fastball with a speed of 44 meters per second and what we want to do is estimate the acceleration of the ball during the throwing motion. Okay, so he's starting right here to right here. What's the acceleration, the average acceleration um, during, the, during this throwing motion, okay? So not, at, not after he throws it, it releases, okay? So it is observed that in throwing the baseball, the pitcher accelerates the ball through a displacement of about 3.5 meters from behind the body to the point where it is released. Okay, so the ball moved 3.5 meters. And then we want to round our answer to the near to the to two significant figures. All right, so what's known here is that when he starts the initial velocity of the ball, right back here, the initial velocity, well, it's at rest, it's not moving. Okay, right, right when he start before he starts to move it. Okay. So we know that V sub zero is equal to zero meters per second, all right? And then we know at the end of this, baseball throws a, a baseball, a fastball with a speed of 44. That's the final velocity after the end of all this. So that's gonna be my V, that's 44 meters per second. Um, what we're trying to find is the average acceleration, which we're just gonna call A, all right? And then what else do we know? Well, we know right here, the, the initial position is zero meters, and this is 3.5 meters later. So I know my x sub zero is zero meters. And then my final position after zero, after, from zero meters on would be 3.5 meters. All right, and I think that's, that's all we've been given. We were never given a time right? We're never given a time, like how long this takes, okay? So once again, which equation are you going to use, all right? So these are the things that we're given. Four things we're given. We're trying to find this fifth one, all right? So what, um, which, of these, which of these six equations would we use to solve this, all right? So um, I'll pause this, and you can answer it, and then we'll come back and figure it out. 
So the equation you should have picked was this one because it doesn't deal with time and we weren't given time, all right? So we know that V squared is equal to V sub O squared plus two times the acceleration times X minus X sub O, all right? So this final velocity, okay, was 44 meters per second. So we're gonna put in 44 meters per second squared is equal to V sub O squared. So that'd be zero meters per second squared plus two times my acceleration. That's what I'm trying to find. If you put an A bar on here because you're trying to find average, that would be okay. And then we'd have 3.5 meters minus zero meters. Okay, cleaning this up, this would just be, I'm gonna keep it as 44 meters per second squared is equal to, okay, so this drops out because that's just zero, is equal to two A times, and this would just become 3.5 meters. And then I'm gonna divide, to get the A by itself, I'm gonna divide by two times 3.5, and I'm gonna write A on my left here. So this would be 44 meters per second squared divided by two times 3.5 meters. All right, and we're going to put that in our calculator, and I want us to round to two significant figures. So grabbing my calculator, and 44 squared over 2 times 3.5. So 256, and I want to round to two significant figures, because here's why. And that, oh, you know, I should say this. This is why I'm keeping everything. Because if you keep everything, you can tell, okay, this has two significant figures, this has two significant figures. So my answer is gonna have two significant figures. Okay, so that means two, seven, six, that six is gonna make the seven become an eight. So this is 280. And the units on this is meters per second squared. Okay, that's acceleration units. All right, and that's the acceleration of the space ball. That's pretty fast. That's a pretty big acceleration, all right? He, he's moving, it's moving pretty fast. All right, guys, let's go to the last problem. And guys, I just realized I didn't make a statement here, okay? So what we're trying to find is the average acceleration of the ball, all right? So the average, I should have made this statement, the average acceleration of the ball during the throwing motion is 280 meters per second squared. All right, so now we're done. Okay, sorry about that. For this last problem, we want to design an airbag system that can protect the driver in a head-on collision at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour, which is about 60 miles per hour. And we want to estimate how fast the airbag must inflate to effectively protect the driver. And then we need to assume that the car crumples upon impact over a distance of about one meter. And then how does, this, how does the use of a seatbelt help um, the driver? And then round your answer to one significant figure. Okay. So... We know from this that our initial speed is 100 kilometers per hour, okay? So what's known is that my initial velocity is 100 kilometers per hour. Now there's a problem with this, and here's the problem. We need meters per second, so we're going to convert this, okay? So I'm going to multiply by, and we should know that 1,000 meters is the same as one kilometer or one kilometer is 1,000 meters. That's how I normally write it, okay? And then we also know one hour is 3,600 seconds, okay? I'll provide these um, on the homework for you if you need to use these, all right? And so then, so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by um, 1,000 meters over one kilometer 
and then that would give us that would get us to meters per hour and then we're going to multiply by one hour over 3600 seconds okay now i'm going to do something that i said don't do but um for the sake of just simplicity we're going to make this um we're going to round to two decimal place or round to two significant figures okay so when we put this in our calculator all right um, we get 100 times 1,000, and then over 3,600. Okay, and we get 27.78. Okay, so I'm going to round this, and I'm going to make it 28 meters per second, okay? Just for simplicity, okay? you can do the same thing, okay? Now, we're gonna use some rounded values which can cause us to be off, but this is happening so fast that these values, even if we round them, isn't gonna make that big of a difference, okay? Because this is happening over, this is gonna be a really short period of time, how long it takes to inflate, okay? So any estimate is not gonna throw us off that much, okay? All right, now our final velocity, when this happens, has to be zero meters per second. All right, and then I know that um, my final position, um, it's going to, my final position, or my initial position is going to be x sub zero is equal to zero meters, and my final position, okay, is going to wind up being one meter, because that's, we got to look, we got to find the acceleration over that time period, okay? All right, so what we need, so we're gonna use this one first, okay? Because this will get us the acceleration, and I'm gonna kind of tell you, okay? Then we're gonna use this one, all right? Because we know the starting velocity and the final velocity, and so we have these two. That we can use this one to get the acceleration, all right? And then we can use this to get the time, all right? So we're actually, this is gonna be using two equations, all right? So very get go, okay, we have zero meters per second squared is equal to 28 meters per second squared plus two times our acceleration times, and then this would be one meter minus zero meter, right? And so this is zero. And so we wind up with zero is equal to 28 meters per second squared plus 2a times one meter. All right, so then I'm gonna move this over. So we wind up with negative 2a times one meter is equal to 28 meters per second squared. And then I'm gonna um, multiply this out, okay, or I'm gonna divide by it, and I wind up with A is equal to 28 meters per second squared all over negative two times one meter. All right, so this is gonna become meters per second squared. So my acceleration, I'm gonna round Okay, and this one I'm gonna to round to two significant figures again. Okay, so in my calculator, I'm gonna put in 28 squared and then divide by, and this would be negative two times one, which is just negative two. Okay, we get 392, I'm gonna to round to, if you use negative 392, you'd be good, okay. Um, Let's go ahead. Let's just write negative 392 um, meters per second squared. If you wrote negative 390, because these, this is going to happen in such a short period of time, this rounding is not going to play a big, important, big factor in it. Okay. All right. Next. Now let's put, let's use this one because now we have V is equal to V sub O plus the acceleration times time. Okay. So this velocity right here is zero meters per second. is equal to 28 meters per second. Plus, now we know this is negative 392. 
meters per second squared times my time. All right. And now if I move this over, or actually I'm going to move this one because this would be minus, right? So let's write zero is equal to 28 meters. I just realized you can't see it. Sorry. 28 meters per second minus 392 meters per second squared times T. I'm going to move these over. So we get 392 meters per second squared. I'm going to put parentheses around it times T is equal to 28 meters per second. And then I'm going to divide by this. So T winds up being 28 meters per second over 392 meters per second squared. And you're going to get a time unit of seconds. Okay. Out of this. So back to our calculator, 28 divided by 392 and we get 0 0.07. So see, that's a really short period of time. So 0 0.07 seconds. Okay. So here's the question. Um, the question was, um, how fast must the airbag must inflate to be effective? So this is um, how long it takes to um, stop, all right? So we got to inflate it before this time, okay? So the airbag must inflate um, be faster than 0 0.07 seconds. So the airbag must inflate faster than 0 0.07 seconds. All right, guys, and that's it for today.